What's going on, ballers? Thanks so much for tuning in again, and welcome back to another Big J Basketball box break video. Today we got a big mail day. Lots of stuff came in. I think it's been about a month or so since we've done a full-on mail day like this, so we've got a lot of packages to go through. So let's get right to it, not waste any time. Take a look at our first package. We got a Paolo Banquero Recon Vector. So I started working on this set right after I opened uh, the Recon Hobby Box on the channel here. I think I pulled about two, maybe three, I think maybe just two of these out of that Hobby Box. It's such a cool looking set. It's not super rare, super valuable or anything like that. There's a gold parallel to 10. Those are rare and valuable. Uh, this is just the base, but still a really cool looking set. I uh, love the, just the design and the photography, the artwork on these. This was the last card I needed for the set. I kind of was buying a bunch uh, all at once and the Paolo was still really expensive. So I waited a little bit to buy this one. The prices went down a little bit. It's still not a super cheap card, um, but I definitely paid a little bit less for it now than if I would have gotten it like a month ago. So Recon Vector set, fully complete. I'll uh, probably, if you follow me on Instagram, Big J Basketball, I'll post a, a full shot of that complete set pretty soon, but happy to have that one done. And more set chases we're working on. Still photogenic from 2122. Um, I'm not gonna even bother with uh, 2122 photogenic or 2223 photogenic, but 2122, still working on completing this set. Um, put the base set together a while ago, but the rookies are still kind of harder to come by. They, they don't show up super often and, or for a good price. You, you'll find some of these with really high buy it nows um, on eBay, but there's Herb Jones. I think I got a couple more here. Got Franz Wagner, so one of the better players in the set. Add that one in with the Herb, and got this one from a seller in China, Cade Cunningham. Still, uh, Cade's still definitely one of the more expensive players in the set. Probably, I think Cade and maybe Jalen Green are probably the two most expensive. Very cool. Card number 101, number one pick in the draft. So I got a couple more of these on the way right now, and then I think only one more that I haven't bought yet just because I haven't been able to find a good price, uh, but that set will be complete pretty soon. And more set chase, Elite Glass, David Lee. I think this is probably the only David Lee card uh, that I own. <laughs> it's really only because I'm going for this glass set. Um, a lot of kind of off the wall players they included in this 2012-13 elite glass set, but making really good progress on that. There's actually, I got a bunch of them here. So we got David Lee. We also got CP3 for the same elite glass set, making some really good progress on this one. A couple more bigger name players in the set. Here we go. We got Dirk. So now we're getting a little more serious with the set chase with sets like this it's always there's always a bunch of cheap ones and then there's always some more expensive ones Dirk's kind of in the middle was not a super expensive card but definitely was not like you know five bucks or, <laughs> or anything like that very cool man I just love the design on these they did such a good job there's so many cards within this 2012 13 elite set that I, I kind of want to chase after I feel like it's one of the better better sets Panini did early on Another one, Timmy D. Shout out Spurs cards, 21 on this one. Oh, this is double wrapped. Mr. Duncan, add that to the set chase. So what is that? One, one, two, three, four, and one more. So last time, uh, last mail day video about a month ago, pull, uh, picked up the Kobe for this set. This time we got LeBron and it was actually the same seller that I got the David Lee from that I got this LeBron from. And I don't know if, if anyone remembers what I said about this card uh, in the last mail day when I picked up the Kobe, I kept saying LeBron is the only other really expensive card in the set. And there was someone that had like a $200 starting bid that just kept resetting the same auction over and over and over again. That's this card. The seller finally, I guess, realized that no one was gonna buy it at a minimum bid of 200 bucks. So he dropped the minimum bid and I saw it like kind of right before 
like right before it ended, maybe a day or two before it ended and made sure to get my bids in, made sure I won this one. So very cool. So LeBron and Kobe checked off the list. In terms of this set now, we got five more here. It's still a big set. It's like a 24 or I think it's a 25 card set maybe. Um, so I still have a lot to go. Um, and the other, the, really the only big ones I have left now that I got LeBron and Kobe out of the way are the rookies. There's only three rookies in this set. It's uh, Kyrie, Anthony Davis, and Damian Lillard. Um, and those three are a little bit more expensive just because they're rookies. <clears throat> um, but still not as much as the Kobe or LeBron. So hopefully I can find those for a decent price. Get that set completed soon. So a bunch of set chase stuff. Now let's get onto more of the PC stuff. Got some Denny, like always. Cheap card, but still a nice uh, jersey color match. I try and buy a lot of the red and blue uh, serial numbered prism parallels for Denny. This is the red fast break, numbered out of 100. I think we got another Denny parallel here. Yep, this is from 21. So this is a third year card. This is a second year card, 2122 optic blue fast break. This one's numbered out of 50. It's another nice cheap jersey match, or jersey color match, Denny parallel. All right, we got some, oh, here we go. Illusion Starlight Rookies. So I already have one of these, but the condition wasn't perfect. There was a little, a few issues. Um, I bought this one because I really would want to find a PSA 10 copy of this card. I don't think any PSA 10s exist. Uh, so buying one isn't going to be an option. Even if they did exist, the chances are, <laughs> if there was like one or two, probably hard to find them. It's such a nice looking card though. I just, I love the pattern on it. You can see how the, the, the light kind of turns and it's got the stars in the background. Um, and this one looked really clean. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing any issues here. I'll take a look, a closer look at it after the video, but this is probably going to be in my next PSA submission uh, preview video. Gonna try and get a PSA 10 on this. It's a, it, I guess, technically case hit. Um, I know a lot of times that uh, doesn't always mean everything. Some case hits are super cheap and more common. Some are super rare and super valuable. Um, but in terms of parallels like this, that you know, it was a retail exclusive. There's probably not. The, it doesn't have a huge print run. It's not super rare or ultra rare. You know, super short print or anything like that. Um, but I would like to have a PSA 10 for my. PC, as I've done with some other case hit Denny cards. And I think we got another, yep, similar one right here. So I already have one of these as well. Um, I actually have two of them. I have a raw copy that's not in the best shape. I have a graded copy that's a PSA 9 that I actually submitted to PSA twice, trying to get a 10. Um, not gonna happen on that one, unfortunately. So I still have one PSA 9, but courtside silver, these were still rare in 2020. Um, couldn't hit the, they were actually, even in the, the retail formats, yeah, there was no, I don't think you could hit these in any retail at all. So it, I, it's, I believe it's still a hobby only, um, uh, kind of a, a, a big hit for, for most rookies. In, in a, for really big rookies, it's still a really big card, courtside silver. Um, again, trying to get a PSA 10. This one looked super clean as well. Didn't really see any issues. Again, I'll take a closer look after the video, but hoping these two can come back uh, as PSA 10s, add those to my Denny rookie stash. And speaking of Denny rookie stash, um, <laughs> I don't know why this guy put like a David Robinson card like in the top loader with this Denny. That's kind of weird. Let's get that, get this Admiral out of here if I can. Uh, there we go. All right. On card rookie auto, nothing super valuable here. Um, but I thought it was funny that I have so many parallels of this card, you know, the cracked ice and blue shimmer and, and premium editions and all kinds of low numbered stuff, die cut stuff, things like that. I don't have, I didn't have any of these base un like non numbered autos, but uh, it's still on card, still a nice card. Um, and there are, there are two variations of this. This is um, the base, uh, it would say A or B here if it was variation A or variation B. I'd like to find the uh, the base variation A and B autos of this too. If anybody sees any of those available, let me know. Love to pick those up. And all right, let's go to our next card. We got, 
Oof, another Denny. Again, seems like a small card. Score blue, numbered out of 99 from Chronicles. This was the last blue number to 99 parallel that I did not have for Denny yet. Now I got all of them. There was 19 total blue parallels from Chronicles. This was the only one I didn't have. Finally got it, number 1099. There's still a couple purples to 49 that I don't have. Last month uh, in the mail day, I got the last red that I needed. Now I have the last blue. Still need like three more purples, uh, but hopefully at some point I can get those and then have purple, blue, and red for every Chronicles parallel um, that Denny has. That would be a nice set to finally complete and put all the way together. All right, just a few packages left. This mail is going faster uh, than I thought it might, uh, but that's okay. We got, this one's kind of stuck in here because this had tape all over it when I opened this one. There we go. Been a long time since we've seen a John Wallace card. Uh, one of my big PC guys uh, on the channel. This is his 1996 Topps Chrome Refractor Rookie card. Um, it's a really highly sought after set. You don't see raw copies of these pop up very often anymore. Um, it's been a long time since I've seen one of these come up for sale. I have a PSA 9 in my collection and the centering, this had not a great picture, not a great auction title. The guy didn't even, didn't even put Topps Chrome. It, I think it just said like John Wallace Rookie Refractor or something like that. So I got this for like $11. Um, the centering looks really nice. I don't really see any issues with the centering at all. Um, it is a little bit green. Um, I'll take a closer look at it uh, off camera. Let's get out of this gross, uh, gross looking card saver. Surface might be tough. Uh, looks okay. Um, I'll have to wipe it down. I don't, there's no major scratches or issues or anything like that. It's definitely greening a little bit, unfortunately. Um, corners and edges all look good for the most part. I'm going to send this into PSA and see how it grades. Um, I, it's, I, it's probably not going to get a 10. Uh, I would, I would be surprised if it got a 10, but a nine wouldn't be bad in this. A PSA nine is probably like a 50 or $60 card, even with the greening. So I don't know if it looks as good as a nine I already have. I'll have to compare it to the nine that I already own. And then we'll, we'll see what happens once I get that back from PSA, but that's going to be in my next, uh, grading submission. All right. We only got two packages left. You're probably wondering why these two cards are in the background, but you're going to find out right now. Ginobili exquisite collection. I don't have a lot of these base cards yet. This is actually only my second one. That's why I threw this up in the background. This is the final year of exquisite 2009, 2010. Last year that Upper Deck ran this. This is the year right before that, 08, 09. The 08, 09 year is actually more rare. This one is numbered out of 125, you can see up here. This one's numbered out of 199, but I think most people like the design for this one a little better. So these still sell a little bit higher than these do, but it's always nice to add an exquisite uh, base card to the PC. Hopefully at some point I'll manage to track all of these down all the different years. Uh, but as of right now, I just got those couple and then we got our morning in the background and our final package here. Let's unwrap this bad boy. This came from a friend on Instagram, really good guy. I think uh, we've dealt for some morning cards in the past and he was letting this one go out of his PC and I did not want to miss it. <laughs> Another immaculate collection patch and man, look at that patch. Let's get the tape off here so we can take a little bit of a better look at the card. I love that Panini has made some of the best patch cards out of Alonzo Mourning's Hornets jerseys. This is from Immaculate. This is the red parallel number to 25. This is actually the gold uh, number to 10. I actually used to have two copies of this card and I stupidly sold one that had a worse patch. So I kept the one with the better patch. Three colors there, but man, I don't know. I think the patch on the red is actually a little bit better. We still got three colors on this one. It's got the nice cut out here. I don't know. This might be a part of like the, the three maybe like at the corner of the three in his jersey. But also like you can kind of see a piece of the the colored pinstripe there. That's like the 
teal jersey with the blue pinstripe there, three color patch, three color patch on that one. But very nice addition. I, I really wanted uh, at some point to get the red to pair up with the gold. You can see the gold, has, they, they did a better job with the uh, shiny hollow foil on the gold parallel. It's not as shiny on the red, but the patch looks just as awesome as far as I'm concerned. So that's gonna do it. Hope you guys enjoyed checking out this mail day. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you all on the next video.